Thank you everybody for coming out to Haas Pavilion this afternoon for a great day in the history of Cal basketball, which has, as you know, a very proud and rich tradition. We get to embrace somebody that's joining this tradition for the first time. You look around the room, and this place is so important to so many people. We see some great former players here. Great to see Leon Poe in the building. Where's Leon at? The show has made it. When you look up in the Raptors, you see the likes of Jason Kidd and Kevin Johnson, all part of this great legacy. We get to add somebody else today. But thank you, everybody, for coming out. So excited for this day and what new basketball coach University of California is going to bring. Before we go any further, I'd like to welcome up to the stage and the podium the Chancellor for the University of California, Chancellor Chris. to welcome Mark Matson as the next head coach of our Mass Men's Basketball Program. As we began our search for this important leadership position, we knew that we needed someone with a hard-to-find mix of skills, experience, and values. Someone who could embrace the uh, unique challenges and opportunities that come with coaching at Cal. Someone with extraordinary, an extraordinary feel and love for the game, Someone who knows and can deliver what student athletes need to thrive in class and in competition. Suffice it to say that Mark Batson has embodied and exemplified these values and attributes throughout his exceptional collegiate and professional careers as a student, an athlete, and a coach. I can imagine no better fit between what we saw and what we know Mark will bring to our university He's a winner in the full sense of the word. Like Jim Knowlton and I, Mark is also a firm believer in the notion that when done right, intercollegiate athletics provides our student athletes with an exceptional opportunity to participate in a competitive environment that fosters personal growth, leadership, self-discipline, and teamwork. We share the belief that Cal Athletics broadens and enhances Berkeley's comprehensive excellence, even as the program strengthens and sustains the ties that bond together our community of students, faculty, staff, and alumni. For these reasons, and for so many more, Mark, we're fortunate and thrilled to have you here. On behalf of our entire campus community, I want to warmly welcome you, your wife Hannah, and your children into our Cal family. We couldn't be more excited to have you here. Go Bears. <laughs> Thank you to Chancellor Chris. It's great to see you here and again shows the importance for her to get the best for the University of California, the student athletes, and the success across the board for the University of California. Next up, the athletic director who's been a busy man the last few weeks finding the next basketball coach here at the University of California, Jim Knowlton. Thanks, Roxy, and uh, certainly thanks to everybody uh, for being here today. Uh, we are certainly excited, and it's nice to see some of our coaches here who uh, certainly will welcome Mark into the family here at Cal, along with our athletic department donors, supporters, and so many others, former players. Um, we're just excited. Today is a great day uh, for Cal basketball. I want to do a big thanks to our team who's put this together today. Um, sort of, you never know when this is going to happen, and. Uh, we thought we'd do this a little earlier, but Mark kept winning, so we delayed it because he kept winning, which is a good, which is a good thing, Mark. So uh, we didn't mind waiting uh, as this continued the journey. I, I want to thank our band, our dance cheer rally committee. If you haven't had your picture with the axe, make sure you get your picture taken. Uh, we like to keep that here at uh, Cal, and uh, it's been nice that uh, our rally committee has been able to guard that uh, for several years now. So. Great, great to have you all here. Thank you. Um, I'd like to just say something really quickly about Chancellor Chris. If you don't know, uh, she just got off a plane from Singapore and she raced here. So I don't know if she even knows that she's jet lagged right now or not um, because her body hasn't told her that she's jet lagged yet. But, uh, but Chancellor Chris always finds a way to be wherever our students are, 
wherever our student athletes are, and uh, and always finds a way to be here at critical moments. And so, Chancellor Chris, I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for uh, having your plane get here on time, not being delayed, so uh, so we could have you join us today. Um, I'd also like to recognize um, our new head coach's family, who's here, and uh, you know it's kind of funny because um, his son Roy is here. Hi, Roy. How are you? Uh, his daughter Allie, who are with uh, his in-laws um, Wally and Annette, and you know maybe Hannah is watching somewhere. Uh, she had their fourth child yesterday, so we gave her a pass not being here today. So Mark said Anastasia came into the world yesterday and, and he said over 10 pounds. And so, you know, as a five foot eight person, our babies were always six pounds. And, you know, we thought, wow, these are really big, but a, a 10 pound baby, congratulations. And uh, we're excited to welcome all the Madsons into the Cal family. I think it's a critical moment for our athletic department and certainly our basketball program. And uh, as we begin an upward trajectory uh, with our new coach, um, I'm excited at what he's done, what he's done in basketball, what he's done as a human being, and, uh, and I'm excited for the group that showed up today and so many more that will join us on this trajectory together. You know, the Cal family um, is here, and I know the Cal family will be incredibly supportive uh, as Mark begins the business of rebuilding uh, Cal basketball. We did an exhaustive search, and you know I can tell you we were looking for someone who could develop young men on and off the court, who could recruit at the elite level, who was a skillful tactician, uh, who could connect with our alums, with our fan base, and who could represent Cal in all ways possible. And uh, we had an, an exceptionally strong field of people who wanted to come to Cal, who wanted to be the next coach, and one name kept coming to the surface over and over and over again, and, uh, and that was Mark Madsen. And so um, I talked to a lot of players, former players, alums, coaches, um, and got a lot of feedback, and I'm grateful for that feedback as, as I was on this journey, and then it made it a lot easier to make this decision based on uh, the feedback from so many. So today we're introducing our new coach who's an educator and a leader who was an exceptional college player. Um, we're still trying to determine uh, where he played college. Um, <laughs> we think we'll figure it out but it won't be before the end of the day. Um, he played in the league for nine years, won two NBA championships, was an assistant coach in the league for six years, coached in the D League which is now the G League, uh, everywhere he's been, he's been incredibly successful. He was a successful head college head coach and won two conference championships in the last four years and was named the WAC Coach of the Year this year. Even more importantly, he is a wonderful, principled human being. He's a family man who loves his players and wins the right way. And so for us, that's exactly in accordance to what we expect and in line with the values of the University of California, Berkeley. So today I'm excited to introduce Coach Mark Madsen as our 19th head coach of our Cal men's basketball program. Mark, welcome to the family. We're excited to have you. And go Bears. one other uniform so that you can put this to use really quickly so uh I want to start off by just saying thank you Chancellor to to yourself and Jim to you for the belief and for the opportunity to lead Cal men's basketball I could not be more excited to be here today Memories from this gym. The last time I was in this gym, I was coaching at Stanford and an altercation broke out. 
I, I ran onto the court to try, try to break it up. I ended up getting suspended. <laughs> I, I ended up getting suspended. The time before that, it was an absolute battle, and I was actually a player on the court. It is an honor to be here today. I grew up about 20 miles away in Danville, and I played at San Ramon High School for kind of an East Bay legend, John Rayner. I have memories of going throughout this whole area, and Leon knows. Leon knows all the, all the high schools out here. I've had battles in, at Reardon, at De La Salle, Mitty, and so it's very exciting for me to come back. Um, Hannah was dying to be here. Even after she had the baby, she was trying to find a way to come, and I said, hey, you, you need to recover right now. <laughs> but she sends her love and her excitement to the Cal community. <clears throat> My sister, growing up, she was always trying to make her way over to Berkeley, and she would come home, oftentimes, with a couple slices of Zachary's pizza. I'm the fifth of 10 kids, and I have to say there were plenty of fights as far as who was gonna get those slices of pizza. Um, I wanna turn the clock back to 1992. I was a young player in high school, trying to find my way. I'd never played a minute of varsity basketball. And so John Rayner, my head coach, he kind of entrusted me to his assistant, Jim Barrett, who played here under Pete Newell in the program. And so somehow, Jim was able to get me on an official visit to Cal. It was my first, it was my first visit as a recruited athlete. And went over to the Harmon Gym, and I watched Jason Kidd practice. Lamont Murray was on the team. Monty Buckley was on the team. I was blown away at the talent level of the basketball team. I was in heaven. Lou Campanelli was the coach, went to his office. I, I barely played any high school basketball, but they treated me incredibly well. Then they took me to the football game. Blown away at the stadium, the views, uh, the, the football team itself, and I was just enjoying myself. And then at some point, somebody walked up the stairs and was walking across the aisleway, and the entire crowd just started yelling at this person. And the chant was simple, take off that red shirt. <laughs> Later there was a coaching change and my recruitment dropped off as sometimes happens uh, in the recruiting process. But that was my first introduction to Cal. Well, that team continued to do so well. They ended up making the Sweet 16, lo losing to Kansas. But that team caught almost my entire high school as fans. A couple years later, in 1994, they won 20 games. And it seemed like every girl in my high school was in love with Randy Duck. <laughs> Lamont Murray came over to our high school to judge the dunk contest. I was surrounded, in a lot of ways, by Cal graduates and, and, and people affiliated with Cal. As a senior, I needed an economics class to graduate. And so I signed up for the 8 o'clock class. Our teacher was there every morning. She loved the material. She loved the students. She loved economics. Jackie Bowman, class of 86, softball, Cal. When it came time for me to choose a major in college, I chose economics, in large part because of her passion for the material. The first time, the first time I played here at Cal, I had to guard Tony Gonzalez. Leon, you, you were a banger. Tony Gonzalez punished people out there. <laughs> I left the game with bruises. I left the game beat up. Over the years, Mike Montgomery, we played Cal, Mike Montgomery would yell at me, keep Tony off the glass, keep Sean Lampley off the glass. We had some epic battles, but it was so much fun. The history of Cal basketball is winning, and winning at a high, high level. Obviously, the national championship, multiple Sweet 16s, repeated NCAA tournaments. I'm gonna to do everything in my power and we will restore Cal basketball to that level of play. We will recruit and develop great players. Players like Leon Poe, player, players like Jalen Brown, Kevin Johnson, Sharif Abdul-Rahim, Jerome Randall, Sean Marks, and the list goes on. The plan for success. We will focus on several pillars and make that our hallmark. To begin with, recruiting. I want to put up a chain link fence around the state of California and keep the best California players at Cal. We will be aggressive in the transfer portal. 
When players enter that portal, that are great basketball players and great students, we're, we're going to be all over them. We are going to be all over them, and we're going to bring them here to Cal. We will recruit nationally and internationally and have great success doing that. Player development. Player development will be a hallmark of what we do here. I want to go back in time and talk a little bit about player development at the professional level. Phil Jackson, one of my mentors, talked to Phil last week. When I got to the Lakers, he talked about the four pivots that were necessary to run the triangle offense. The outside turn, the inside turn, inside reverse pivot, outside reverse pivot. And he always talked about the four pivots. Any player that has played for Phil Jackson knows about the four pivots. Well, Kobe took the four pivots to the highest level. He would get to practice at times, hours before practice started, and work on the four pivots from left block, left elbow, right elbow, right block. And he mastered the pivots. And by having tremendous footwork, it allowed him to rise up over defenders. And while they were stuck on the ground because of great footwork, he was elevating over the top. His legacy of hard work will always be in my mind. And we will bring that same element of hard work, dedication, and player development to Cal and focus heavily on that. Style of play, I want to play fast. I want to play up tempo. I want to play a style of play that will focus on the strengths, the unique strengths of every player we have in the program. Player development off the court. Here at Cal, we are surrounded by resources, amazing academic resources. The Cameron Institute, which will embrace our student athletes as a freshman and, and help them all the way through until they graduate and even after. We're going to do everything we can to create a family atmosphere with our players. The, the players at Cal, I'm going to try to treat like my own children, which I think is hugely important to create that atmosphere. Preparation. There's an old saying, hard work doesn't guarantee you anything, but without it, you don't stand a chance. No one will outwork our staff or our players. Our staff will be world class. I'm in the midst of finalizing key staff members, and we will update you as we have more to announce there. NIL. I believe that Cal, in some ways, is already on its pathway to becoming a national leader in NIL, in accordance with all NCAA rules and in accordance with all the mandates and statutes set out by Congress. I'm incredibly excited and encouraged by NIL. But I want to point out, name, image, and likeness is not paid, paid to play. It is absolutely not paid to play. And in speaking with some of the leadership of the collective here, I'm incredibly impressed because they're talking about all the things that the athletes can do beyond, beyond the court, getting out of the community, giving of themselves in other ways to help youth. And that is part of the shared vision that gets me excited to be here at Cal. Admissions. Cal is the best public education in the world in the world. And this, we need to cast a broad net. I don't want a player, a prospective student athlete to be penalized because maybe his Sky High School doesn't offer you know, enough AP courses. And in talking with university leadership, I'm extremely encouraged at, at the case-by-case -case basis at which admissions will look at each student athlete. I think that's a sign of a great institution. Past players and coaches. I've been mentored by great coaches and great players. And I stay in touch with them, and they're my friends. And I will draw on each of them as we embark on this journey together. There's absolutely no reason why Cal basketball cannot be restored to the rich tradition that has been such a part of this university and this athletic department. But it's, it's going to be a team effort. It's going to be collaborative. We're going to work together. It's going to involve admissions, leadership, alums, donors, boosters, and we're going to do it together. I have a vision in the not too distant future of hanging banners here in Haas Pavilion. I have a vision in the not too distant future of traffic jams in the Caldecott Tunnel coming across the bridge of people coming here to this arena to watch this style of play and this brand of basketball and the players in the Cal program. I have a vision of greatness with Cal basketball.
I could not be more excited to be here today. Thank you so much. All right, Mark. Hey, Roxy. We'll now put you on the spot here. You're in the hot seat. Let's go. Okay, okay. First off, you got to tell us what the last few weeks was like for you. You're trying to prepare your team. You're playing for the NIT Championship with Utah Valley. Your wife is due, like, any moment. Literally, I was sitting with you in Boulder, Colorado about a week and a half ago. You got your cell phone ready to go just in case. You got the call. But what's it been like to balance that in addition to your family, your program, and then potentially taking this job here at Cal? What's it been like? No, it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> it's been a whirlwind. Um, before the Colorado game, we were within a couple of days of the due date. And, you know, our three children that have come, they've all come at night. And so, really, we got to a point where we said, I wasn't going to be gone nights. And I almost didn't go to the Colorado game. Our associate head coach almost coached it. But it's been, it's been so exciting. Um, you know, yesterday when, when the baby got close, I just, I was incredibly excited. And, uh, you know, for our kids to, to be able to meet her yesterday was, was a great moment in life. Coming back to the Bay Area, where you had so much success as a player here in the East Bay and, of course, at the Junior University over across the Bay. Um, but what's it like for you to come back to the Bay Area? Well, Jim Nolan picked me up at the airport, and one of the first things I told him is, what about this air? What about this air? I love the air here. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it's funny, it's funny what you remember, but, but I grew up in the Bay. I grew up driving across the Bay Bridge, walking across the Golden Gate Bridge as a family, going to the beach, the friendships, the relationships, the memories. It's awesome to be back. You mentioned earlier about your battles on the floor here against Cal, going up against guys like Sean Lampley, Tony Gonzalez. Now, in reality, everybody knows you weren't the only one that was taking the bruising <laughs> and talking to somebody in there like, can you What's the best way you can describe Mark Mads as a player? I said, Mark was the kind of guy that he's going to pop you the nose. It could break, but Mark could also be the first guy to run over and pick up a towel and help you after he did it. And then as Mike Montgomery told me, he'd probably do it again. <laughs> what was the drive for you that had you playing at such a high level your entire career that you never took a playoff? Well, you know, I think maybe I've always had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder um, in terms of just knowing that for me to be successful, I was going to have to outwork somebody. I was going to have to out-hustle somebody and just do the little things. Because, you know, some guys can jump 45 inches. Some guys can make five out of ten threes under pressure, under duress. I couldn't. I couldn't. And so I had to do mine, try to outwork somebody. But, but, but I'm just glad I never had to play against him right there, Leon Poe. Um, I'm glad I never had to play against him right there. <laughs> it's funny, I was talking to Ben Braun this morning because he coached against you when you were playing at Stanford. And Ben's like, you know, I had an answer for this guy and that guy, but I never had an answer for Mark Madsen. How did teams not have an answer for you? Well, that's a great question. Uh, you know, some people sagged off me when I had the ball on the perimeter. <laughs> but, you know, it's a... It's, uh, you get to the NBA and you really, you try to figure out what your strength is. You try to figure out what your strength is because there, everyone is so, so good. And I, late in college, you know, I kind of realized I had one shot that, that I could make and that was a jump hook. So I got to the NBA and I just tried to focus on that, focus on strengths. And that's what we're going to try to do with our players. You know, we'll try to look at the strengths, the unique strengths and abilities of our guys and put them in the best position to succeed. Speaking of strengths and abilities, what was it like in practice to go up against Shaq every day? <laughs> you guys really want to know? Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. So, the very first time we went live at the Lakers, Tex Winter would say, okay, we have the varsity team and we have the JV team. I'm a rookie, and he said, you're on the JV team, which means you have to push the varsity team every day. I said, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. So. The first team was lining up against the second team and vice versa. And so everyone was getting their matchup. And I realized no one was guarding Shaq. And then all my teammates, Devin George, Slava Mendon, they said, you take Shaq. <laughs> I said, I don't want to take Shaq. <laughs> it was too late. It was too late. And so I, you know, you try and guard him. You, nobody can guard that guy. Nobody can guard Shaq. But after two practices, I limped to the training room to Gary Vini. 
And I said, Gary, I can't walk. I said, I don't know what happened. And he said, I've seen this a million times. Shaquille just puts people out of commission. He just put you out of commission. <laughs> Took two weeks and I was back out there. And then you were back for more. Yeah, I was back for more, but you always hoped that he was in a good mood when he was practicing against you. So speaking of those Laker days, you became an internet sensation for your masterful dancing at the championship parade. Where did you learn those great moves? <laughs> well, let me start by saying, in this day and age, if people remember me at all, I'm just flattered people remember me for anything. <laughs> but uh, I never had too much rhythm. So, uh, you know, my wife's trying to teach me a little more rhythm. We'll, we'll see if she can do it. How much flat did you take from your teammates after that? I, I wasn't the only one down there dancing, Roxy. <laughs> there were a lot of guys dancing. They just picked the one guy that didn't have quite the rhythm that everyone else had. So early you brought up the chant that Cal people like to do, right? Take off that red shirt. First off, I've never seen you look so good in the blue and gold. But did you, are you going to have like a fire sale or a garage sale to get rid of all your cardinal and red stuff? You, you know, I, I can't tell you how excited I am to, to dive in here at Cal. I, I love my alma mater. I had a great experience there. But it's about building Cal and getting Cal back to where Cal belongs basketball-wise. And uh, just couldn't be more excited about it. You had some choices and options. You could, you were doing a great job developing that Utah Valley program, had success in the postseason, and in a great situation there. You were appreciated, and I know you talked about, when we were talking about your program at Utah Valley, how much you love the kids, love the community, love the department, how much support you got there. What was it about this job? Why was a Cal was the right spot for you? You know, in, in every phase of the interview process, with, with Jim Nolan, I got more and more excited about this job. I mean, having grown up here, I truly believe that, that Cal is a sleeping giant in terms of men's basketball. And each time I talked to Jim, we talked about more and more details from you know, the, the current roster to admissions, to NIL, to the, to the history and the tradition of the players and the coaches that have been here. This is a sleeping giant. This is a program that can be a nationally ranked program year in and year out. That's what got me excited. Well, you're now the head coach of the Sleeping Giant. Congratulations, Mark. Great to see you at Blue and Gold Finally. Thank you again to everybody for coming out and supporting Mark Madsen, his new venture as the head basketball coach for the men's program here at the University of California. We're going to have a press conference in about 15 to 20 minutes for the media where you'll get a chance to ask questions. But thanks again to everybody for coming out here today. Go Bears.